Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and we are back in the garage for another DIY on that grape tray that neighbor Dave and Dorothy got me. Remember in the last video we made the amazing clock that only cost us like $14 and looks so good. Well, neighbor Dave and Dorothy gave me two of those grape trays and today we are going to use the other one. And what are we gonna make out of this one? We're gonna make one of those home, like, I don't know, what do they call them? Like command centers where there's like a spot for your mail, a chalkboard, a bulletin board, a you name it, it's in the command center. Your kid has after school practice, boom, put it on the chalkboard. You have an eye doctor appointment, boom. Put it on the chalkboard. You just picked up the mail and it's a bunch of bills and you don't feel like open it? Put it in the in the cubby, in the command center. Need to put your keys on something? Hook them on the command center. That's what we're making today in this DIY Wednesday, This Is Real Life video. Okay, I know I don't need to say this, but just in case I need to say it, for those of you who are like, Sherry, I don't have a vintage grape tray because I don't have a neighbor Dave and Dorothy that gave me one. That's Okay, you can make this out of scrap plywood, easy peasy, nothing to it. I just happen to have this and I have all my supplies on top of it, so I'm using it. I mean, I have plywood right there. I could make one out of plywood if I wanted to. It's the same, the same thing applies. You know these DIYs, it's like, yeah, great ideas, but they're also here to provide you inspiration. Cause you know, 2020, we're getting shit organized, done, all that stuff. And organization, command center, baby, hell yeah. Another thing, the good thing about doing one yourself is you can make it to fit your needs. Do you need a chalkboard? Maybe, maybe not. Do you just want a bulletin board on one side and cubbies on the other? Do you not want cubbies at all? You can do whatever you want. It's your DIY. What I decided to do on my DIY is I'm going to use half as a chalkboard. You're wondering like, what the shit is this, Sherry? This is like maybe chicken wire, but not really chicken wire. It's tiny little square wire. I got this a long time ago because I was watching a YouTube video on how to create like your own wire baskets. So I went and bought this and I made my own wire baskets. I still have a bunch left. So I'm gonna use this to create like mail cubbies and I'll go over how to do that. It's pretty easy. Then I went over to the Michaels this morning and I just got this rolled cork like $5.39 for the roll. What I am thinking, half is gonna be chalkboard, this will be like a mail cubby area, and then under the mail cubby area will be corkboard. So, you know, you can pin stuff to it. You know, we have our picture framing supplies. There are some cup hooks in here, because I do want to put like three little hooks for like keys and whatnot. And you may remember when we made the clock, we used the top of the grape tray. I'm gonna use the underneath because I want this frame because there we can set like our chalk or you could even do a dry erase board, hang a dry erase board on here. One of those little ones you get at the Dollar Tree and put like dry erase markers or whatever. So I'm gonna use this side because I just want the ledge. Also, don't know if I'm gonna put this into use or not, but this is the remnant of what we cut off of our clock grape tray. So it's here, I may not use it, who knows, but I have it just in case. First up, I am going to paint half of this in chalk paint. Okay, so as I learned from the Great Tray Clock, these boards are not the same thickness. Where I would think this is the center line, it technically is a little off center, making this side about 18 and a half and making this side about 17 and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the chalkboard on this side using these three. I know there's gaps in here. I don't mind, I think it'll be cool. I'm not gonna sand this smooth or anything like that. I'm just going right over the top of it. I have what's left in here and some chalk spray paint. They're both by Rust-Oleum. I'm hoping I just have enough of this. I probably need to get a little brush to go up onto the edges. I'll get a brush. Every time I paint, be it walls in the house, whatever, I do not tape anything off. I just cut in by hand. I use a nice angled brush to do so, and I just 
right in there. I did bring out the tape just in case because there is not a lot of chalk paint in here. Maybe I'll do a coat of this. Maybe have to like touch up with some spray paint. I don't really know. Chalk paint's pretty easy. It's just like normal everyday paint. You just paint it on and let it dry. So I'm just gonna dip right into the can. Cut in first, get the paint off of the one side of the brush. This side is the side that goes down and I kind of tip it in and then run it right along the edge. Tip it, flatten it out and go right along the edge. That's the way I like to cut in. So I cut in first, this side, this side, and then we'll paint the whole thing, yeah? Okay, I have this side all chalkboard painted up. The directions, if you've never used chalkboard paint before, it does say you can use a brush or a foam roller. Typically on really smooth surfaces, I use a foam roller, but since this was so not smooth, I used a brush just because I felt like I could get in there a lot better into all the nooks and crannies. It does say to try to avoid excessive brushing, I was hella excessive on the brushing just because of the unevenness of these boards. But I feel like we're good as far as coverage is concerned. You do want it to be a nice thick coat. I mean, I think I got it on there pretty good and thick. It's a chalkboard, hell yeah. I gotta go wash this out because this is a nice brush and I wanna save it. I'm gonna let that dry, wash this out, and then we're gonna work on our male cubbies. While I was waiting, and still waiting, for the chalkboard side to dry, I was playing around with proportions on the non-chalkboard side. I just grabbed an envelope because I wanted to see how easy it was to slip the mail in, and we don't want it like this, so I feel like my little mail cubby needs to be at least 11 inches from the top in order to fit envelopes in there. This inside is like 22 and a half, so I could split it directly in half and go 11 and 11. I took these edges off of the one from the clock and I thought that would be cute to border that line there so we just don't have a raw edge of cork. And then I was thinking maybe hook, 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 like four hooks for keys, whatnots. So I'm thinking the top of my border is gonna be at 12, leaving cork board room at 10. I was also toying around with, did I wanna put a shelf? Like, would that be cute? I don't think so. It's our DIY, we can do whatever we want. But I think the layout here is measurement wise what I wanna do. So let me move all of this so that we can make our basket out of our chicken wire. My chicken wire is unrolled and it's actually pretty easy. It does get pretty sharp. If you're not like, you know, super professional like me, you might wanna put on some gloves. I just use it barehanded. And you just need some little wire cutters. It's pretty easy to cut. I think I've even done it with scissors once before. This is my template of kind of the way I want it to look in the end. So what I wanna do is open up my template. This is just kind of gonna be a guy. The trick is, is that when you cut like this line that's going like this, if I want this to be my edge, I wanna cut furthest away from that line so that I leave myself these little metal teeth. These little metal teeth are what's gonna wrap around and hold everything together. I'm just gonna line this up with the end and cut out an eight and a half by 11 piece, basically. And then we can manipulate it and fold it however we want. This edge already has the little teeth, so I don't have to worry about that. All I need to do is cut the top and this side because this is gonna be my edge right here. I wanna go through and not cut right on that line, but I wanna cut off the next line in line. So I'm just gonna go along, cut this out until it looks like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So we have our piece of chicken wire cut to about the size of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Now, remember when I was like, okay, originally we wanna leave the teeth on all three sides, but because we're not making an actual basket, we don't need the teeth on our edges. Our edges are gonna be folded over and adhered to our grapevine. So you only need the teeth on the top because we're gonna fold that 
and make a nice like thicker seam so we don't cut our hands off. So right along the straight edge on this side, right along the straight edge on this side, and then teeth on the top. My fancy fold is no longer applying. It's just gonna be a nice little rectangle. So I want the front of my rectangle to be eight inches. So if you have a nice ruler, I wanna go in a half an inch, two little rows, and I wanna fold that up against my ruler. Now be careful because it is kind of sharp. I mean, it's not so sharp you're going to cut yourself and bleed. I'm going to go in for that half an inch first because that is what we're going to staple to our grape tray. Then I want to come in an inch and I'm going to bend that in like so. See? So now we have our flat part that goes to our tray and then we have our side, which is our depth for all of our papers and shit. So now I'm gonna do that to this side. Put my ruler there, fold that up. Put my ruler right on that line and fold that guy up. Voila, boom, but we have no bottom. I'm gonna crease these real, real good. And then I want to uncrease them and do the same thing with my bottom. I'm not flattening it flattening because I still wanna see where those are because we're gonna have to cut away a little bit of our corner so we can fold that up. Fold that. Ugh. Put my ruler there. Fold this up. Now, because I have this side here and this side here, there's too much excess in the corner. So I need to cut away where my creases are. So it's kind of like paper crafting, actually. Leaving teeth on these cuts. That's my crease. So I want to come just below that line so I have teeth. And I'm going to cut this diamond out. Now, I'm gonna cut these teeth right here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so now we've cut out this little corner shape here, and I have to do the same to the other side. Since this is gone, now I'm gonna go up and up, and I have those teeth to clamp down, and it makes our perfect edge. Do you see, do you see? So let me cut out this diamond over here and then we'll make it. I have both of my bottom squares cut out. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get back my creases. We're gonna fold this up. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. So now with all those little teeth, you need to get yourself some needle nose pliers because you can't do it with your fingers. But basically you're gonna take those teeth and then curl them around the straight wire. So I've got my needle nose. So I wanna bend my little teeth outwards. Perfect. So now that they're bent out, I'm gonna fold this one in and fold this one in, and I'm gonna catch, <laughs> you, I know you can't see this at all, but I'm gonna catch these teeth on this straight wire, loop it under and over, and loop these teeth under this straight wire, loop them under and over. Wrap it up and pinch it over. I have these teeth I still need to wrap up and over, but there's our corner. We had a little last minute design change that I just made up in my head because I only wanted my little pouch to be like about four and a half, five inches tall. So I went ahead and just cut off the top part and I cut as close to the straight edge as I could. I was originally gonna fold it over and down, but I decided what if we covered it in like black grill grain ribbon, like just folded it over and hot glued. I'm still thinking about that, but I have created my cute little cubby. And I also decided that I want the chalkboard on this side. So the cubby is gonna go here. Look at how cute that is. I'm gonna spray paint it black. Even though the silver's cute, but I want it black. Black hooks, black this, cork board that's not black, black chalkboard, you get it. Our accessories are going to be black. See, look, now this will be down about here, we decided. Look, how cute. I like the width of it. I like everything about it. It's a perfect little cubby. I think I'm gonna call it a night, but cork, cubby, key, hooky things, chalkboard. I love it. We'll continue this tomorrow. Good morning. It's a new day and we are ready to finish up our home 
command center. All we have left to do today, I mean, literally we could have finished it last night. I just, I just didn't want to. So all we need to do is hook our little letter opener, put our hooks in and do our cork board. Obviously we're gonna cut it to size. Oh, and I need to spray this black. And then I'm gonna use these cutie pie little pieces of wood that I stole from the first grape tray. I just thought it would be darling to use this as a border on the top using the old rusty nails as well. For the rest of the cork board, how I'm gonna adhere that down, hot glue along the edges and Super 77 spray adhesive on the back to get it real nice and smooth. But first off, let's spray everything black so while that's drying, we can, you know, double duty and then put in our cork. I have sprayed my envelope holder, all my little cup hooks. I even went so far as to spray my silver screws and little nails just in case I had to put my cork board in with nails. Next, we need to decide how big our cork board area is going to be. I want it to be 12 inches from the top. So I want the cork board to be 10 and a half. Currently it's 14. I've made my 10 and a half inch marks down and then I brought out a sharp blade and we're just gonna cut along using my nice metal ruler as my straight edge to get this cork trimmed up. Voila. Oops, <laughs> done. So I'm gonna put my straight edge along the bottom so we know it's nice and straight. I'm going to get some Super 77 and spray this side and then I'm gonna hot glue the edges down. So I have a combination. I have Super 77, which is really old and barely any in there. And then I have some Krylon Easy Tack. I'm not using both. I'm going to spray some on the wood in kind of the general area. And then I'll spray some on the back of this as well. And then we'll hot glue. Super 77, we're gonna do a combo because we need this to adhere. All right, I'm gonna put this on the ground really quickly. There we go. Let's lay this down, nice and even. Perfect. Smooth out all the air bubbles. We now have our cork, Super 77 down, and I'm gonna just lift up the edges and run a bead of hot glue. I do have to trim this side here. Where's my ruler? So I'm pressing super firmly on my ruler. I have my straight edge, no, my blade up against my straight edge. Oh yeah, that was good. Oh, good job, Sherry. That looks nice. Look at that. Props to me. So we've got that. So let's get our hot glue gun and do the edges. Hot glue gun's all warmed up. So I just wanna lift up the edge and run a bead of hot glue. I don't need to hot glue the top because I'm gonna do the little decorative wood with the rusty nails. So let's do that. These two pieces of wood, of course, are not the exact length that I need them. So I'm gonna trim up a little bit of both on the inside not the end because I like the way the natural end is. This I don't wanna mess up. I'm measuring a million times before I'm cutting this one. I'm gonna get my jigsaw out. I'm just marking it with this blade here, even though I have a pen right there. I'm gonna cut this off at six and a half with my jigsaw real quick, easy, quick cut. This, all of this part is like the decorative stuff. Do you need to put a wooden border around your cork board? No, you don't, but you can. It's completely up to you. Like I said a million times, these DIYs, they're your own. You do whatever. You want minimalist, white, purple, blue, whatever. You can do whatever you want. This DIY, as well as all of my DIYs, are just to spark that imagination. Get your creative juices flowing. That's why a lot of the times you're gonna see me, myself, work through the process how does Sherry's crazy wackadoo brain work? How does she come up with this shit? Well, you see it because this is real life. And sometimes you just kind of got to step back and go, hmm, how's this going to work out? And then you figure it out. It's pretty easy. There we go. I'm putting the rusty nails right in the holes, the original holes that they were in. And then we're going to, I'm just going to keep doing that until it's done. <laughs> 
Okay, so I have all of my rusty nails in place and from the underside, you see them poking out like deadly rusty daggers. Ain't nobody want that. So I'm hoping I can just ply and bend them down without having a hammer. Yep. So I'm just gonna bend these back down into the wood so no one, no one gets cut. Yay. Perfect. Oh, she looks good. I love it. I think this area is amazing. Now we have to put our little envelope holder. How are we gonna do that, you ask? Well, I toyed with how I was gonna do this as well. What I wanted to do originally was like staple gun it, but my staple gun's too wide to get into here. So I came up with an alternative plan. And that is where these little baby, baby screws come in that I painted black. I'm gonna take my screw gun with a long extension and I'm gonna screw this into here. That's my plan. Let's see if that works. I need my screw gun. Oh well, surprise, surprise. I cannot find my long Phillips extension. I only have this baby one. I know I have a long one, but I don't know where that is. And this won't fit through the chicken wire squares. So I'm going to have to hand screw it, but that's okay because these screws are teeny, teeny, tiny. Screw, screw, screw. It's going to take a little more time than I wanted, but that's okay. I don't want it butted right up against this. So we've got two inches from the edge. So that's good. And then we just need to make sure it's straight. Yeah. Perfect. My eyeballs are good. And this wood is so thin that it's actually really easy. There's my first one. And I'm gonna do another one on this side, one in the bottom corner, one in the bottom corner, and then maybe two across the bottom. So not many, it's just holding envelopes, so we're fine. Oh my gosh, I love this, by the way. Let me finish the rest, I'm getting excited. Okay, our little mail basket is screwed in and it looks so cute. Look, oh, here's the bill I don't wanna pay. It goes in the basket. I love that. The last thing we need to do is put our little cup hooks in for like, you know, keys and whatnot. So I have four of them that I spray painted with my black chalkboard paint. I'm just gonna screw them in. Two inches from the top and then seven inches from the top. Maybe like an inch and a half in and an inch and a half in. Let's do our measurements and make a mark. Where's my marker? Making the tiniest little mark. Perfect, all right. Let's screw these puppies in. Oh yeah, that's in nice. Yes! Oh my God, this looks so cute. Okay, let me get the other three in. The cup hooks are in. It looks darling. It's pretty much done aside from us putting our little hanger mechanism on the back side. So picture frame hanger, whatever you got. I actually have these two things. Remember the Thanksgiving centerpiece DIY that we made from Dollar Tree frames? These were those, told you I was saving them, but no. I think I'm gonna use these little teeth situations one here and one here. We'll just nail those down and then we'll be ready to hang. I changed my mind. This has a natural lip right here. I'm literally just gonna hang it off of this natural lip. So I'm saving myself some time. So we are officially done. So the next time we see this amazing home command center, we'll be actually in the house in a command station. Okay, I have the command center hung. Not only is it completely amazing for your home organization, but it is super fucking darling. Let's take a look. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, come on. You got to admit, that's pretty awesome. Literally, it cost, I mean, you know me, I had all the supplies minus that little piece of cork that cost me, I want to say, $5.39 at the Michaels. I recycled that chicken wire. I recycled my chalkboard paint. I already had those cup hooks. $5. $5 make you hollas for your home command center. So you know me, I was like, this is amazing. So I went online to see like how much 
you know, command centers are going for these days. Nothing on the internet is as amazing as what we've made here today. Little like skinny ones like this go anywhere from like $39 to $55. Big ones, I saw one at the Pottery Barn that was on sale for $118 regularly, $199. Dollars. It wasn't even a chalkboard. It was like a bulletin board, dry erase board, I think, and then like a mail holder here. A, not as cute. B, didn't have a chalkboard. Now, I know some of us may not have extra chalkboard paint lying around, extra this chicken wire is lying around, but I bet you have some stuff lying around, whether it be out of an old grape tray, like I have here, a piece of scrap wood. Maybe I was even thinking like it might be cute. If you had an old vintage larger picture frame, you could put a piece of plywood inside the picture frame and then make your command center on that. That would be effing darling. So like I have this, I have a million picture frames hanging in my garage. It's from my old event planning days. If you found a picture frame like this, maybe at the Salvation Army, the Goodwill, maybe you have one in your garage, take it and mount a piece of thin plywood inside of here. And then you can make your command center on that. That would be cheap, just by the cork. And I don't know how expensive chalkboard paint is. It didn't take much because I barely had any left in that can and I still have some left. You could get the spray paint chalkboard paint. What is that, five bucks? And then as far as like your envelope or letter holder, go to the Michaels. I saw some really cute little envelope holders, even like ones they have with the office max that are, you know, the black like plasticky ones. You could put something like that there. I bet zero supplies, like if you started from nothing and you wanted to make a command center, I bet you could do it for 20 bucks or less. I really do. Cup hooks, cheap. All this stuff is not expensive. As a whole, when you put it all together, five bucks for this, five bucks for that, five bucks for the paint, 15, 20 bucks. And this is huge. This is 24 by 36. It's huge. And just think, Pottery Barn, 199. That's all I'm saying. 199, 20 bucks. 199, 20 bucks. Seriously, I think we did a great job. Thank you to Neighbor Dave and Dorothy for giving me these great trays because they just created so much inspiration. And I love this. Like at first I was like, oh my God, I love that wall clock. It's, and I do love that wall clock. It's amazing. But this, seriously dude, and it didn't cost us much at all. So come on everybody, get in your garage and DIY a home command center. It's gonna organize you. You're gonna leave little notes for your kids up here like clean your damn ass room, exclamation point. It's gonna be amazing. You're always gonna find your keys and you're always gonna have bills that you don't wanna pay. So it's perfect, but they'll all be in this spot. So yeah, make one, I dare you, I'm daring you. Make a command center. It was amazing and it didn't take us long. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the DIY Wednesday videos I push out, which are every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.